We're very excited as to what's going on, as Rabbi uh, Rebecca has just suggested. Uh, we're just uh, at a uh, new height in what we're going to expect to achieve. And I'd like to call on Rabbi Gideon Schlush, our new executive director, who is going to be giving us direction uh, and who is going to affect the programs that we plan on having. So he is going to be working on, as you'll see in a film in a few minutes, uh, on our chapters and our growth and our, bringing our community back to the focus that we need to require, that we require today at Mizrahi. Rabbi Shlush. Rishista Rav Shachter, Kehal Nichbad, community leaders, Rabbanim. It's a great honor to have been invited to serve as the new executive vice president of the Religious Zionist of America, Mizrahi, Hapo Mizrahi. I look forward to bringing new energy to the RZA, making religious Zionism relevant to the next generation of American Jewry. Many thanks to Marty Oliner, uh, who has carried this organization for the past 10 years or more. Uh, I've attended Shabbatonim in Manhattan. They've just been phenomenal. Thanks to the incoming leadership, the incoming chairman, Rabbi Rebath, uh, the Presidium members, Rabbi Lenny Matanke, Dr. Ernie Agatstein, and Mr. Oliner, who I speak with several times a week. The RZA now has a Manhattan office. I'm so appreciative to our new office manager, who hopefully you met outside, Marnie Rubenstein, uh, for the amazing role that she's played in getting us off the ground, from getting a new database for our office, preparing weekly emails, getting supplies, uh, ordering phone service, just all the basics of setting up a proper office here, uh, in, not here, in Manhattan, where I live and where we work. Uh, many thanks to Seymour Shapiro, Ike Blackmore, um, Usher Brockner for their encouragement, for showing us the ropes, and to Harvey Liebman and Robert Roshua uh, for partnering with us in this new position as treasurers as of the organization. Also, thank you to Jerry Eisenberg, Rabbi Eisenberg, head of the Religious Science of Chicago, uh, for being here today, and he's just been an invaluable resource as well. And of course, to Jerome Perez, who is uh, just incredible here with us, came all the way from Israel, head of World Mizrahi. One of the key areas of focus for the coming year, as you just heard, is to create RZA chapters. I was given a copy of a tribute journal from the year 2000. It was just remarkable to see how many chapters the RZA had, and you name it, in Detroit, in Bell Harbor, in Teaneck, in Baltimore, Chicago, LA, all over. And uh, we need to bring this back. And I feel a little bit like Yitzhak Avinu, you know, bringing back the wells of his father. And uh, I'll be flying out to several cities this year to meet with local leadership to plan RZA activities, Shabbatonim, whether it's Malava Malka's, Onig's, uh, concerts, whatever it is, Yemei Yun, uh, to work with communities to develop meaningful programming in religious Zionism. So I say to you now, uh, if you would like to start a chapter, uh, to restart a chapter in your neighborhood, in your community, please see me uh, afterwards. We will build a... Um, cadre of young rabbis, uh, we're committed to bringing RZA Mizrahi to the next generation. So uh, we will look to young rabbis and lay leaders and youth around the country um, who want to be a part of something that is Israel-focused and encourage them to, ru to run Israel-related. There are so many in that community rabbis, young and old, around the country, and we want to unite them, bring them together through strategic, strategic partnerships with the OU, NYU. NYU and uh, National Council of Young Israel, of course, the Rabbinical Council of America, and we're going to highlight what they are doing to, prom to promote religious Zionism and an attachment to Medina Yisrael. For the second year in a row, the RZA is sponsoring missions to Israel for 50 college students, as you just heard, to educate them, to inspire them in the area of religious Zionism. They're spending the upcoming winter break in their yeshivot and midrashot, and these students we didn't just send them to Israel, we're not just sending them to Israel, but we're making them part of a fellowship where they're committed to work back for the organization over the coming year. So upon their return, they're, they're going to be working in groups on year-long manhigut leadership projects designed to bring the message of religious Zionism back to communities across America. Are there any fellows that are here today? Okay, so um, wasn't... 
Um, we're, we're, we're very new at this. There are, there, there are a few in the hall, as was heard, and uh, in the years coming, um, we will insist that they join us for the uh, national conference. Um, half of them, you should know, are from YU and Stern College, the other half from universities across the country. And each week, if you get, I'm, I'm sure you all get, hopefully, our weekly emails. So we will be profiling, and we profiled the first one in our weekly emails. And again, deeply indebted, not only to Marty, to Marnie Rubenstein in our office, but also uh, to Sarah Robinson, who really has been running this fellowship program and just doing a phenomenal job. Uh, additionally, World Mizrahi is planning a mega celebration. You'll hear more about it from Rev Paris. Um, on the occasion of the 50th anniversary of Yom Yerushalayim coming up this May, we will promote this initiative and encourage uh, 50th anniversary celebrations around America. We want to bring the Chidon, as Rev Rebek just said, front and center, encourage courses in the study of Tanakh to be taught across America. We want to see the hiring of Dati Lumi educators in our day schools. We want to partner with school leadership to help facilitate this. Ultimately, we want to be seen as the Orthodox community's Zionist movement. We need to educate American Jewry that Israel is not a country that is 68 years old. This is the ancestral homeland of the Jewish people. We have a 4,000 year history and presence there. It's the gift that God bestowed to our ancestors, to Avram, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Yoshua, David Amar, Shlomo Amar, and it goes on and on as you all know. Hashem told Yaakov, We need to be knowledgeable of Israel's story. We have to stand up for Israel. We have to constantly make Israel's case and how sad it is that there's a generation of Jews growing up today who don't feel that sense of awe and belonging in witnessing the restoration of a people to their ancestral land after 2,000 years. We don't appreciate that for 2,000 years our ancestors yearned, prayed, poured their hearts out for a return to the land of Israel. And if we're not living there, as I wrote in my article, if you got to see it in Torah to go, we should give an extra clock for the fact that we're not there yet. But at the very least, we here in America and around the world have to be doing everything that we can to be actively involved in Israel, in Israel advocacy. And we should remember half the Jews in the world are living there, living in Israel. And we should never forget, of course, that the future of Am Yisrael is over there. It's not here. We're sitting here now between two parshio, Parshat Noach and Parshat Lech Lecha. We read just yesterday in the Torah, The dove did not find a place to rest. Noach sent it out of the Teva and it came back the first time. So the Medrash says the dove was sent away, couldn't find a place, returned to the ark. Medrash explains that's the fate of Am Yisrael in Galut. Uh, although the Jewish people will dwell among the nations of the world, they're going to go, they're going to try and find a place, but they won't have anywhere to rest. Ultimately, they're going to have to return to the Teva. They're going to have to return to the Ark. And so too, Am Yisrael is going to return to the land of Israel. And Bezrat Hashem will all be welcomed back there, just as the dove was welcomed back by Noah. But too often, again, we in America, we function on autopilot. We're complacent in our homes, in our, with our families and religious Zionism reminds us that we have to constantly look forward and we have to look in the right direction. And we're sitting now in front of Parsha Lech Lecha. Parsha Lech Lecha is the Parsha of Eretz Yisrael. There's hardly a section in the Parsha that doesn't emphasize the significance and the importance of the land of Israel. So as long as we approach our inheritance of Eretz Yisrael and our establishment of the state of Israel as a gift from Hashem, and as our destiny, then Bezrat Hashem, we will merit to see it flourish. Yishayel's words should ring loudly in our ears. Leman Tzion lo Leman Yerushalayim lo For the sake of Zion, I will not be silent. For Jerusalem, I will not be still. I hope that you'll join me as we educate and inspire North American Jewry. Your presence here today means that you care very much about the RZA and Mizrahi. And please let us know how you want to get involved, how you want to participate. Please continue to show your support by contributing generously to the RZA Mizrahi. Thank you.